Thank you, and, and hi, everyone, and thank you so much for having us here. Uh, Markin is a, uh, is a su supply chain company, and we have been dedicating our work to making sure we bring the incredible science that you're talking to, to patients uh, at the clinical stage, but also, uh, importantly, at the commercial um, uh, rollout. So a few things I want to talk today about is, first of all, is how the consumer experience changing the supply chain needs for those, uh, for the cell and gene uh, therapies, um, how we're building the supply chain that's personalized and specifically designed uh, for individual patients, how we can build, uh, how we can support the accelerations of those uh, therapies and bringing them to commercial stage faster, and, and further customization in this area. Um, so over the, the, the past couple of years, right, we all know that the COVID really pushed the boundaries of what the patients are expecting from, home, uh, from healthcare. And, and of course, the cell and gene uh, uh, have been a huge, uh, hugely affected as well, where now patients are expected that their care at the, not only at the commercial stage, but as well at the clinical, is highly personalized, user-friendly in terms of the, the systems and the, uh, the app, let's say, that they use, and it's built around their lifestyle. So what is really special about the supply chain for personalized therapies? First of all, it's bidirectional, right? It starts at the patient, of course, there is a difference as we talk about autologous cell genetic, but whether it's, it's a, a donor cell or, 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 or patient, individual patient cell, this is where it starts and as it moves through supply chain, uh, through manufacturing, uh, with the number of raw materials that needs to be in place, it moves back into the patient. Uh, and again, for in, in CAR-T example, it needs to move exactly to the same patient and we need to make sure that that happens, uh, not only at the clinical stage, let's say, where we have two to four sites, but also at the commercial, right, where we're rolling these therapies out uh, in, 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 US, in North America, in Europe, and, and in Asia. Uh, what COVID-19 had shown to us and to, to wider industry is that the fragility of, uh, of the supply chain, how, how just incredibly important to make sure that everything we talked about before, like risk mitigation and lane risk uh, uh, and a routing assessment is really very important. And, and uh, we, we have done this right, obviously, before the COVID-19, but even now, it's not uncommon for us to have up to six backup options, the routing options for one patient just to deliver the patients, just to deliver the therapy. So essentially, we're ready for plan A not to work, and we're ready to switch to plan B and plan C and so on and so on. So up to six options that we will have per patient to make sure that their samples will move uninterrupted as much as possible, and their therapy will be delivered uninterrupted as well. Fluctuation, uh, fluctuating availability of raw materials. We've seen what's happening with the, uh, with the, with the COVID-19, but even now with impact of what's happening in Europe, uh, we're seeing um, um, uh, uh, changes, right, to how raw materials are moving. We're hearing from our CMO clients uh, more and more things like just-in-time manufacturing, where manufacturing will, st will start as soon as the patient is identified. So we will essentially have 24 to 72 hours in many cases to deliver raw material to CMO to ensure that, that manufacturing is done in time. We've also seen an FDA is continued to encourage uh, pharma to build the flexibility into the protocol so you can pivot, right, if things are changing, recruitment is not happening, or, or there are issues, right, where you need to bring, let's say, some decentralized options, that flexibility has to be built into the protocol so we can prepare to shift and introduce patient-centric options, so collections at home or any sorts of at-home uh, care, and as, including long-term follow-up uh, for the patients after they have taken uh, the therapies. Um, this is, again, you, most of you probably have seen it. This is a, a recent McKinsey report. 
uh, we are, um, you know, there has been an industry assessment of the disruption that which was caused uh, by the uh, by the by the COVID specifically issues, and what those supply chains uh, issues have done to disrupt. Uh, cell therapy and gene therapy. So as you can see, the, the disruption in manufacturing, delay and hold, and supply of raw materials are, no, are noted as the two biggest reasons for, um, for any manufacturing delays. Uh, obviously, it impacts to different extent cell and gene therapy, gene being, being a little bit easier to manufacture, so it's impacted to a lesser extent. Um, but still, we, we firmly believe that this is, you know, it's, it's our responsibility and we take this you know, extremely seriously to make sure that those delays are, are uh, minimized as much as possible. <clears throat> so, as, as we're gaining more and more experience commercializing uh, um, personalized medicine, we're hearing more and more our clients talking about the supply chain being their competitive advantage. The sites, the infusion sites are now the clients, so they want things to be delivered in a certain way, they want things to look in a certain way. So how we deliver the therapies and train the sites becomes a, a competitive advantage for the sponsor. So um, a few, some of the things that we're looking at as we're building commercial a strategy is uh, first to market, right? So which regions, which countries you need to go, uh, you want to go live in first, which sites uh, you want to go, go, uh, go in live first and how you want to do that. Reducing overall developmental costs by optimizing the what we call a manufacturing supply chain, i.e. how we support your manufacturing sites, your CMOs and your NCDMOs an ability to pivot, right, with the, with the study design. Um, we as well firmly believe, and again, it's been our conviction for many years now, and we've learned, unfortunately, sometimes in, in, a, in a hard way, uh, that we want to remain agnostic. Agnostic, and we recommend strongly to remain agnostic to packaging and technology. Things are changing, and, and we've seen with, with some of the sponsor clients just the packaging change can take up to 18 months, including all the change controls and protocol changes. And again, this, this can be a, a, a really impactful, right, as you're trying to commercialize the, the package. So again, as you coming in early in the design, right, bringing these considerations and build the flexibility into your protocol, into your QA system, QMS system to make sure that you are able to pivot as, as the study and will progress. So typically when we, when we plan, you know, clinical to commercial uh, personalized supply chain, we're looking first of all at the patient. So you have your phase one, you will have four, you will have six sites where the patient is. <clears throat> So we assume the patient is in the U.S., and then we will look at, you know, which, which clinic it will be supported in, how it will move then further to CMO, where the, the raw materials will begin to come from, who is responsible for that. Does, as a sponsor, do we have an oversight of that, right, through a single view in terms of how the manufacturing piece is going to come together to the CMO? And will you know? And if there is any delays, again, how the manufacturing sh uh, schedule will be impacted, and how subsequently patient uh, will be impacted uh, from that. So then, of course, as the manufacturing done, the, the the therapy will move back to the hospital and administer back to the patient. So as we're building that, and and all of this will have a number of backup plans and contingency plans. We're moving further and saying, how about you have this many patients now, right? And all of this starts again, right? And all of this is being built with the view to give the, the, the sponsor or, or, or the, uh, the, uh, the, the pharma company an understanding of can they bring the AF material back in 60 hours? Does it need to be frozen? Can it move raw, right, based on the time to your manufacturing site. And then based again 
on the, as the therapy will move back, clinical is, is one thing, right? But as it commercialized, is it moving into countries where you need a 3PL license, you need a manufacturing license now to deliver to, to, to patients? So as we have now this, you know, let's say, this many patients, and we wish for all of, all of you to get to the stage where you're commercializing at the scale, to really help you to understand how you can really bring this to life and bring this to the patient. So from our side, we build the network to do exactly that. Uh, the specialist on the ground in many parts of the world is really there to, to, sh to share the experience, right? We want to be really open and say, look, you want to do this. This is likely going to work, but some of the things you're asking are likely not going to work. And we want to be really transparent because, again, uh, we, we want to make sure that we're as successful as possible. So when we're looking at the overall the, the supply chain, and it includes the patient and, and the lab and the samples and the, the therapy, uh, these are just the, you know, some of the pieces we're looking at. So as you can see, obviously, uh, any, anything starting from the AVE kit and how it moves to the side, of course, how the, the, the patient material moves to the CMO, how all the raw materials come to CMO, how, things, how the therapy moves back, uh, let's say, to the site or to third-party storage, let's say, if it needs to be, if it moves back in batches and administered um, uh, to, uh, to multiple patients uh, from, uh, uh, um, uh, from batches. And then we're also looking at things, and this is especially becoming a, a, a hot topic in the recent months, is the long-term follow-up of those patients. What's happening with the patients, and you, you've seen a recent announcement that some of the CAR-T therapy become in a second-line treatment now. Those are the therapies where, where we've seen increased demand for long-term follow-up of the patients at home. So for some of those blood draws, these patients that have been in hospitals for many, many years, if we can remove that burden and ensure long-term follow-up is done at home, this is something that sponsors, and we are proud to support a number of CAR-T trials where, where the, we're supporting the long-term follow-up of the patients at home. And, and the, these are all the pieces how we, you know, that we bring together to make sure all those maps, all those complex things that I have shown you before, we support from just basic ensuring that things are moved from point A to point B. But most importantly, it moves in a way that's somewhat predictable or as predictable as we can make it. Um, we want to make sure that there is a visibility visibility to the sponsor uh, of, of how things are moving. There is a chain of identity, chain of custody, so all the IT pieces, the integration is absolutely critical, right? And, and have the flexibility to integrate with different platforms where we are fully agnostic to the pl platform you have, making sure that that visibility is there, the visibility is there. So if, if, you know, a few things that if, if uh, you know, taken from, from this discussion is, um, first of all, our strong recommendation and suggestion is build your, uh, you know, think about supply chain as a critical path. Uh, you know, based on just on some of the experience, we like to say that the decisions you make in phase one will come back and haunt you when you try and commercialize this. So we want to be there really very early to make sure that the decisions are um, as, as well thought through as, as possible. Think of supply chain as your competitive advantage. Again, the sites will want to make sure that the therapy is arriving in a certain way. And, and, uh, and we need to listen to that and we need to adjust to sites, uh, to sites request. Um, think about the vendors or the partners that can take you all the way through clinical to commercial. Because again, these things, it, it, it is, these, uh, you know, we see a lot of things moving very fast now, right? You already skip in phase three, going straight into early commercial. And that's really important, right? You need to have that flexibility where you don't need to change. You can stay with the same partners that will take you through seamlessly. And then 
Think about you know, being as agnostic as you can because new technologies, new packaging, all of this come into the market very quickly. Every six months, there is something new. Uh, build, build and work with the partners that can allow you to pivot. They don't tie you to a, a, a certain, uh, let's say, system or, or a box because, again, as, as these therapies are growing in numbers, there is going to come a, a shortage at some point. There will become a bottleneck of available materials. So constantly look out, uh, constantly challenge your partners to really be proactive and forward-looking to deliver the best value to you uh, that you can. And that's it from, from me. If any questions or comments? Thank you.